One area where a concerted multidisciplinary research effort has been made is the spectacular Ningaloo Marine Park. In terms of its global significance, I mean, it's definitely a biodiversity hotspot. The amount of endemicity, i.e. how special a place is, uh, is increasing all the time. Until the Ningaloo Marine Research Program was established involving WAMSI and the CSIRO Wealth from Oceans flagship, Ningaloo was relatively unknown from a scientific point of view. The five-year program has increased our understanding to equal that of the Great Barrier Reef. So Ningaloo is an extremely healthy area. I mean, it's still one of the most pristine areas in the world, and why wouldn't it be? I mean, it, it doesn't have major agricultural catchment. I mean, they're pastoral leases, so it doesn't have the sort of things that happen in the Great Barrier Reef where you've got sugarcane farms, lots of fertilisers, big river, high rainfall, and it all washes in, into the near shore waters of the Barrier Reef. That doesn't happen on Ningaloo. Ningaloo is backed by a, an arid environment. It was in the deeper water off Ningaloo's reef crest, where the whale sharks swim, that scientists made an important discovery. In a collaborative study with the Australian Institute of Marine Science, the Western Australian Museum and various universities, WAMSI project teams headed out for the first time to study the deep water biodiversity of Ningaloo Reef. It was a voyage of discovery. Although it's been talked about for decades, no one had before got around to systematically sampling the deeper waters of Ningaloo Marine Park. One of the most spectacular findings of, of that work, when we combined the work of the museum, the work of the universities and AIMS, was this very clear finding that the biodiversity associated with Ningaloo isn't just the corals and the fish that we are familiar with on coral reefs, but in fact the deeper waters hold some world-class biodiversity, particularly associated with filter feeding communities such as sea fans and other soft corals, and most importantly, sponges. We found 618 species, 155 species of sponges, 227 species of echinoderms, and 236 species of mollusks. We found species in our study that hadn't been recorded from Australia before, species that had never been found in Western Australia, uh, 15 new species of sea star, three new species of mollusks, and we think that probably half the species of sponges are new to science. We just haven't finished the taxonomy. This is a big branching Sigmaxinella species that we found off the uh, front of the Ningaloo Reef, um, a massive cup that uh, was collected that we still need to identify. You can see the filter feeding capacity of this one. These are all the exhalant pores. So the sponge water, the, the environmental seawater will go in this side of the sponge and out through these pores and the sponge will have it extracted all the nutrient it requires from the seawater. So how have these discoveries changed the way we see Ningaloo Marine Park? So we've now got uh, a view that we need to be thinking about not just the corals and the coral reef fish, but the whole park is an integrated functional unit and that the biodiversity values are particularly strong in species above and beyond the corals. Mm -hmm.